Welcome to Vegas Live with Nina and I'm Nina on your house and of course you know where we are. We're at Quirky Minds Media Studio doing fabulous down here. I have with me uh, Michael Lanetti. Um, a lot of you in Vegas and probably around the world I would imagine um, know that name and uh, it's a, a name that's sort of out there and it's in there and it's got a whole lot going on Michael. Yes it does. It, 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 you have a name that is so much in there out there and I'm going to um, bring up his book first because um, corruption cover up um, and it really was a cover up for you wasn't it? It was. It was a very difficult um, situation. It took me uh, two years to write the book to set the record straight. Okay. Go ahead. And where was that? With because you was you served time in jail. Uh, they got twenty years. He only served twenty years in jail for something he didn't do. Right. Um, I had a story actually last night. I was some program was on, and there was another story out there. Yeah. And, and he went on the Voice or something, and he'd been in prison the same time, and and he was innocent as well. There's a lot of people. Wow. There's a lot of people that that it happened to. But but God used me because I did something. What that, did you do? That no man ever did before. Okay. I wrote and directed 60 biblical plays. Oh I had over 17,000 men from every race, creed, and color, and I worked with over 300 of the most roughest, toughest guys in the world. Serenios, Paisa, Border Brothers, A Dubs, and Nevada Tresses, every gang member. And I wasn't That's a playwriter. I wasn't a playwriter. I was but you learned. But you learned. God right? used me in a powerful way. It was it was the hand of God that used me. And I remember the day. But I you recognized it, though. Oh, without a question. Well, when you were in there, you you recognized that. Well, since I'm in here, I'm going to do something. Is that what you were thinking, or did it just suddenly arrive or come? What happened? It was. It was. I was numb. Um, you know, I woke up one morning and I went from. I had a major magazine called Las Vegas Image. That was my magazine. Twenty years ago, and I was falsely arrested, and I went after the police department. But the mistake that I made is... What's going after the police department? What's the police department? <laughs> what you do is when you get a big guy, you just hit him. You don't tell him you're going to hit him. You go after him. Just, yes. And uh, I, that's why when people come to my restaurant, I tell everybody at the end of the show, you've been a wonderful audience. I thank you. I said, but I got 20 years for a crime I never committed. You heard dead silence over the whole crowd because they see me from an entertainment. Yeah, they see you on the... So you do your entertainment Entertain bit first. First. And then at the very... At, right at the end right of the show, end, I pull out the book out and the say, I want you to know about what happened to me. Because today people pull you up and your crime comes up and they don't have a clue and they run with it. Yes. And I always said this many times. The innocent write books. Not the guilty. The guilty want to hide in a corner. They want to run well, away. The last thing they want to do is write They don't want to talk about, about it. What right. done. They don't want Whereas to talk about it. Whereas you were, because you knew, were, ha, I mean, how can, they, how can that happen? It's, it's like I'm sitting here thinking 20 years, you know, even one day in jail is, is, is tough. Well, but 20 years, 20 years to try to convince everybody out there that you didn't do it. And everybody in prison is innocent. No matter who you talk to, everybody says, I didn't, I didn't do it. But it's a funny thing because um, if I didn't lose everything I had, I could have never wrote those plays because I was not a Bible guy. But every play came out of the Bible. And there's so many wonderful stories in the Bible. Yeah. I don't want to take too much of your time up. No, well, you, know? you should take all my time up. <laughs> and um, um, I, re I remember the day I, I, I went up. I was, they put me up north. And they said, you're in cell 60B. And I opened up the door. And there was a black guy in a cell. It's when I'm telling you, it's in the book. And I looked, I said, oh, they got me in the wrong room, I said. I'm Italian. I thought they put you with Italian people. What the hell did I know? I didn't have a clue what was going on. This is, this is funny. I mean, this you could take on a little bit of a sense of humor, yeah. but it probably wasn't funny at the time. No, not for me. Not, not at all. And I, I and I was in my early 40s. I was 59 when I got out. I went in in my early, I was in my youth. Oh, you were right. Well, I was in prime. my prime of my life. The prime I was in the prime. Life. I came out an old man. So I, so what happened was, is I, I remember sitting on the toilet seat. They had a steel toilet seat. You see them in the movies. Yeah, same thing. And I'm down like this, and, and my, I'm looking at the floor, and the tears were coming out. Pouring out. And the guy looked at me. He said, buddy, are you okay? No, not at all. Are you and kidding? And I says, no, I said. He says, you, you sure? I says, uh, I, I, was, I was in another world. In a total I, shock. Total shock. And, he, and I, he said, what happened to you? He said, what did you do? And when I talked to him, he says, if you're telling me the truth, I can help you. Now, let me tell you how God works. The man's name was Maurice Singer. He was down 15 years at the time. 
They gave him life without. He was in for double murder. The only difference was he was a lawyer. He said, I'm an attorney. He reached out his hand. He said, my name is Maurice Singer. He said, Mike, I'll help you. That man saved my life because they don't put black and white together in a cell. If you're Mexican, they put the Mexicans with the Mexicans, the white guys with the white. Italians That's the way the they Italians do it. And, yeah, okay. they, no, but, not Italian, but if you're white, you go white. Right. That's how they work it there. And that man was with me for a year and a half. And how that man saved my life, I can never tell you what this guy did for me. He would come into that cell every, and he knew I was I was destroyed. Side, I wouldn't yes. eat. I wouldn't. I wouldn't eat. I wouldn't do nothing. And he would come in and he would say, "You know, I'm, I'm doing your case, Mike. I'm, you, I'm going to get you I'm out. Lucky. I promise you." And he's on his typewriter, you know, doing motions for me. And uh, never forget that guy. And he come in every day. He said, "Hey, pal. Hey, buddy." Hey, pal, hey, buddy. Black people don't Same talk thing. like that. Yeah. Hey, pal, hey, buddy. That's exactly what he said to me. Yeah. Yeah. And and he would say, I made you peanut butter and jelly. You I said, I don't want, no, 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 you got to eat. I don't, you don't eat, I don't eat. So? Year and a half. So, like I said, that's how, that's how it started. And then I went to the church. I'll never forget it. And this is how I landed up for now your Now, this audience. is the church in the in prison. The prison. Yeah. And I walked in. Right I'll never forget it, Nick. I opened up the door. I walked into the front there was nobody in the place and I said dear God I says you got to let me go I said you got to let me go I said you got to give me the strength for me to take myself out I said I can't do you 20 can't years do and I fell to the ground and I was in tears I mean and I felt a hand on my shoulder and I looked up and there was a guy and he looked at me and he said uh, you're Mike Leonetti aren't you I go yeah how'd you know he said, Mike, he said, I used to come to your shows in Vegas. He said, I was, uh, so I'm a, he, knew you, he, knew he knew you. He said, I'm an inmate. He was an inmate. But those days, you could have been an inmate and be a pastor. Today, they don't allow that no more. Okay. And uh, I wanted to crawl deeper where I was at because he seen me from the top. And he said, I wonder if you can help me. And I said, uh, no, I, 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 to do what? He said, nobody comes in this church if you can only help me. I said, to so do now, what? He now said, you want, now you're going to help him. He's whereas, asking me to help whereas him. Whereas the other guy was helping you. Right. He's so asking, now it's right. reverse. He's asking me to help him. I said, help you do what? He said, if you could write a play. I said, listen, I don't write plays. I don't know where to start. I said, I'm a Las Vegas entertainer. I said, look, I got to go. And I get up and I run out. And I go back to the cell. And the next morning I get up and uh, I'm, looking, I'm looking for the nearest tree to hang myself. And I go back into that church and I get on my knees again and... I'm in with right. desperation yeah. and with tears. Yeah. God, you got to give me the strength to, to let me go. You can't leave me here. Sure enough, I felt somebody with their hand on my shoulder. Yeah. That's him again. And he said, Mike, are you okay? Yeah, I got something in my eye. I said, there was nothing was in my crying. eye except tears. Yeah. He said, listen to me, if you can only help me. I said, well, what do you want me to do? He said, there's a story of Job. If you can write the... I said, Job who? I don't even know the guy. Who's Job? <laughs> it's in the Bible. I didn't know who he was. So he goes in the back and he hands me the Bible. He said, read it. Well, needless to say, seven-year run, 60 plays later, 17,000 men came to the show, and I worked with over 300 of the roughest, toughest guys in the world. And they would walk out that chapel and look at me with tears in their eyes. Would you go to different prisons? Or was it just this one prison? No, well, I did a couple. I did the High Desert, and then I went to Lovelock, and then from there I did Indian Springs 10 years. Okay. And then from Indian Springs I went, and there's another story about the other day. They, I had they, I had a, an altercation. A young kid came to my cell. One more let them know that I wanted to hit him. They, they, took me off, they took me out. They, they shipped me off the yard. And, they, and I wind up at uh, uh, Warm Springs Prison. That's why I finished the last two the years last two of the years. sentence. And uh, that's a hell of a story, because the plays were over, but they re, re redid it again. They re did, I because re they were such a success within the, the prisons of, of people understanding something. Yeah, nobody they ever did never that. understood. Nobody ever did. There's a lot of people went to prison. They did a lot of things, but nobody ever did plays. Now, Not biblical plays. No. Now we're talking about prison and biblical plays, and we're talking right. about. This. But what were you? What were you sentenced for? It was an assault charge. Assault. Assault. I had a girl that worked for me, and um, I fired her. The minute I fired her, she said, "He did this. He did that. He did this." T 
Today, it's all it takes is somebody to point their finger. And the prime example is Kavanaugh, the judge, the Supreme Court justice. Here's your prime example. That girl went back 40 years. He did this to me, and they destroyed that guy's career, you know, on TV. So that's all it takes it's in amazing. this gen I generation. I hate to say yeah. it being a woman, but it's amazing. And I see a lot of it, actually. Um, as a woman, yeah. I know what women can do. Sure. And, and some of them, it's unbelievable, but to me it's not believable because some women just have that vindictive thing about them, about guys and, and, and what they say. And they say innocently, sweetly, and then they start crying and doing all the bit. And I'm looking at them saying, ah, you know, it takes two to tango. Tango. Well, mine's a little bit more intricate than that because the police were involved. They falsely yeah. arrested me. Mm -hmm. And I filed a quarter of a million dollar lawsuit on the, it's in the book. I think I'm telling you, it's in the book. As, as July uh, July twenty fifth is when I I filed the okay. I filed the, uh, the suit. It. Now yeah. what you you you've written this book you've been to jail you've done all this stuff uh, but, but before you went in into jail yeah. and before you served this incredible awful term, um, you were a singer. And you had your own. Did you I have performed your own? all over Vegas. You performed all over Vegas. Back in the seventies, I was with. Um, I, I there's a great story I say on stage how it started through Sinatra. Thank God for that man. He gave me my break. And uh, I had a hit record in 72 back in Philly. And what they was the name of it? You'll never know just how I'm much I love, love you. you. That I was the it. song. And it was a remake and it was a hit. And they stuck me in Vegas. And um, can I tell us real briefly? Yes, man? you can. I love you telling me this. Absolutely. And uh, they stuck me in the, the, the dressing room. I, I was just a kid. I was in my early 20s. <laughs> And I opened up the door and I seen a little stove. I, again, this is a story I'd say on the stage or on part of my show. And uh, I looked at the stove, I got so depressed. And I called my father in Philadelphia. And I heard my, my grandmother say, don't talk too long. Those days was a collect call back in the 70s. That's right, yeah, because you couldn't like afford. That, right. You couldn't afford. <laughs> That's right. He said, what's the matter? I said, Dad, I'm depressed. He said, depressed about what? He said, you got a hit record here in Las Vegas. He said, what did I teach you? Anytime you're unhappy, eat a dish of macaroni and make you feel better. <laughs> so, Typical Italian. So eat I go some to, food. So I go to the store and I, make, I get some tomato garlic and I put a little money down together and I made pasta. I just put it on the table. Within seconds, as I put that macaroni on the table, I hear a knock on the door. I said, my who could it possibly be? I get up, I open the door, Sinatra. He said, hey, kid, what are you doing? I'm so cooking. He <laughs> says to me, I said, I'm making a dish of macaroni. You hungry? And he looked at me. He said, what would you say to me? I said, I just put the pasta on the table. Have a dish of macaroni. <laughs> he said, wait a minute. He said, and he was a strikingly, I was in my 20s. He was yeah. in his 50s. He had the piercing blue eyes. He was a very handsome guy. And, and he said, you're that kid with the hit record. I said, come on and sit down and dish of pasta. He was amazed that I talked to him like I'm talking like to you. Talked to, yes. But he, he probably eats, loved it. He sits and he eats and he goes, my God, this food is delicious. Where's the phone? It's in the corner. He gets up. He walks over to the phone. He said, this is Mr. Sinatra. He said, give me Dean Martin's room. He said, Dean, do me a favor. I'm downstairs in the dressing room. Just for a minute. I want you to meet this kid. He cooks like my mother. The rest was history. Through that man, Liberace, Donald O'Connor, Debbie Reynolds, every major celebrity I cooked. And sang and for performed them. for all of them. Then I worked for the place called the Tower of Pizza back in the 70s. That was all those, the guys that are long gone now that I could talk about because no one's going to pay me a visit. But that's the guys. And <laughs> to, and they to, wouldn't believe that you're in jail. Right now, right. Now, right. And those, that was the days. And, and everybody But you still cook, there. don't you? Well, my, the restaurant, yeah, it's called My Mother's House. My Mother's House. That's very the name well, of the restaurant. That's very, very well known in Vegas. But yes. i got to tell you a funny story. Have you ever heard of um, celebrity chef Tarantino? I never met him, but I heard of him. Well, I, I'm now doing a cooking show with him. Marvelous. So, I'm, and I've never done a cooking show, but we, we actually, I'm like a, I'm, I'm, I sort of, my comedic side comes out a little bit. Cause I, it's funny because there's this guy and there's me and I'm trying to do what he does. And it's, it's, it's quite a funny show, but he's a very good cook. And he just opened his new restaurant, Tarantino's in, um, in uh, Atlanta. What, what in we, Georgia. What Laura and I have today, we have a yeah. supper club. That's the way Vegas was 40 years ago. So I have entertainment five nights a week. Oh, fabulous. And I'm the only restaurant that's your table for the night. There's not a place in Vegas that will let you sit, sit. all night. All they won't night. do it. 
We do. You do. And we that's, do. Well, but that's the old days. That's how I used to be. It's how we I'm want not it. aging myself, but that's okay because everybody knows how old I am anyway. I'm 39 and holding, and that's it. But no, I love to have a table, and I'm used to that. You walk in at 8 o'clock reservations, 8.30, and you come. You've got the table for the whole night. For the night. And, the, and so you have entertainment down there. And everything. Five nights so, a week. I sing on Friday and Saturday. Oh, so if I come down, I've got to come down Friday or Saturday. Friday and Saturday. Yes. Through the week, I have different acts. I have Rita Lim. I don't know if you know Rita Lim. I know. She's fabulous. Rita, Rita's with her. me on uh, Wednesday, and then I have uh, Ashley Filler. She's on Thursday, and then I have me on Friday and Saturday, and then uh, Robbie Howard. Robbie, who's magnificent, best impersonator in the world on Sunday. He's leaving uh, at the end of this month, and I got uh, uh, Kelly Vaughn coming in. Oh, Kelly Vaughn. Yeah, I've heard of her. Kelly. I haven't, so I haven't heard her on Dolly the Parton. Her. She does Dolly Parton. She does Reba. She does. Oh, she wonderful. is incredible. Got to have her on the show. Absolutely. She's excellent. Uh, so, again, you know what I mean? Uh, it's it's nice when you have something like that. We go out for a dinner show. I think it's say. absolutely wonderful. In all your career and everything, what are you really proud of us? Apart from this story you just told me about Sinatra, but with all the achievements and everything you've done and the hard time you had, though being in jail for 20 years, you didn't make it as hard as it could have been because you, you utilized the time while you were there by writing these. Time, time stood still for me. It just stood, yes. I didn't, yes. You don't look at time. You can't, the, the biggest mistake people make, I seen them on that phone. You know, I was one of them guys picking up the phone, you know, calling my mother, you know, and she just died. She died at 90. Did you know that lady wrote to me every day for all them years? She never missed a day. Well, your mother. Yeah. The only one. She, See, was, what, she was the only one that stood, the only one that stood behind me. She was the only one that stood behind me. Why, did other people think no. that you'd done it? Or no, no, of but course. Just... Of course. Let's say you, something happens to you and you go away. So what happened to Nina? Let me tell you what she did. She robbed the bank. Oh, my God. I would never believe that girl would do something. I wasn't there to defend myself. No. They wrapped me up and tucked me away. And that was it. I was sentenced on the 16th. I was in prison two days later. Most, most guys take you three months to get there. Yeah. Now, you walk yeah. out of prison 20 years, and you walk out of those gates. I dropped to my knees and kissed the floor. Amazing. That's exactly you what I... You couldn't believe that you were actually out. I could. I never thought I would make it. Did you get out sooner than you were supposed to? Or did 13 you? years. I, they gave me 20. It took me 13 years to clean that sentence up. It took you 13 years. To clean it up. And they gave me every day. Because I fought the case from, of the men, from day one. Tough. Because thousands they, and thousands of motions. None of, well, yeah, because none of them want to be wrong. They, they don't want to Well, no, of course not. The only thing I wanted to see, they forced me to do a plea. What I wanted to do was go to trial. You know, and the ironic, again, what I'm telling you is in the book. The person that accused me signed a report that she, she was never assaulted in any way. Never. Police report. When you but the day that. I fired her, now she changed her story. But that was perfect for the police department because now they wanted to squash that $250,000 lawsuit that was hanging over their head. Oh, I don't know. It's all very, uh, the, this police department and everything that's going on, you can't live with them and you can't live without them. So it's kind of, it's such a, such a, a it's very, more open it's now. delicate. It's more, 20 years ago, it was hush hush. Yeah. They were the guys with the white hats. Today, they got a light shine uh, on and them. And that would probably be the techn technology now, because of the technology, filming everything, seeing everything, doing well, yeah, everything. Well, that's why, the right. Is. That's why them guys are in some serious trouble today, because yes. they got to, those days, we believed they were, they were the good guys. So yeah, now, I, mean, I was brought up to be a policeman, I was always a good guy. You good want guy. time, ask a policeman. Good guy. Uh, but yeah. now they're seeing what, what they have done to people. Yeah. You know what I mean? From, from every race, creed, and color. Not just one race. Yeah. Every race, creed, and color. Because, you know. Are you going to write another book? No. No, not really. Well, I tell you. Quick, no. No, I, I'll be honest <laughs> with you. I mean, I said everything there is to say. Same. You did everything you know what to mean? do. I'm, I'm 70 years old. Uh, you look marvelous at 70. Well, you'd be surprised. Teeth, 40 grand for choppers. You know what yeah. I mean? Was that her hair, one or the other? So. <laughs> No, no, I'm teasing, I'm kidding, I'm fun with you. <laughs> you are, You know, it. but to write a book, you know, because the book is great because it's about my childhood in Philly. Yes. It, the first half of that so book is growing up. Growing up, it's to show, show the foundation up. of who yeah, the, I was, yeah, yeah. and then into the crime, of and course, then the motions course. and everything that I put. Because anybody could write a book, and they can say whatever that they want. Of course. They can say, it's a good book, but I don't see no proof. This is I put the yeah. You've I put every evidence, motion every in there. Motion, every motion you're feeling, and you do you have any? Um, you must do. This is a silly question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Do you sort of have any emotions about it still? Do you sort of go back and think about it? And every day. 
you know, I've got that every, every day. Can you imagine thinking about every day? Even though you're out and you're having a wonderful time, you still had all those years taken away from you, which as, as you know, as you said, Michael, every day. those were your prime, you, you, you reached your goals and everything you wanted and then you locked up. I, it disappeared. I was it on top of the world within seconds. Yeah. And someone said something to me, I'll never forget, I was on a TV show, uh, Dale Davidson show, I don't know if you know who Dale is, and he gave me 10 minutes, he gave me an hour, from 10 minutes went to an hour. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised. And he said, uh, what was the hardest thing for you, Mike? And uh, I said, what do you think? He said, to be falsely accused? I says, no. He looked at me. To get all them years? He said, what is it? I said, to be left to die by the people I thought loved me. Yeah, because you didn't have all the people out there helping you, mm -hmm. did you? Nobody. My wife was a part of it. Took everything I had. Good divorce papers were in there. Cleaned me out. The lawyer, here's the best part. No, I'm really shocked. This is called ineffective assistance. A lawyer could not represent, I, if I'm your attorney and I'm a friend of yours. Yes. And I'm a friend of your husband's. Yes. And you, I can't represent you because I'm a friend mm -hmm. of you and your husband. The yes. lawyer that represented me, represented me in a criminal case. Represented my wife in the divorce and was in business with the people that accused me of the crime. So you had everybody against you? And which was but against the what? law. Yeah. But guess what? Michael's a survivor. Oh, yeah. I won. And Michael survived. And Jimmy Bracken. Out. You know who Jimmy Bracken was? Yeah. He was the fighter that came back as for the title shot years ago, back in the 30s. Yeah. And he won the title. That's what happened to me. They thought I was gone. You got gone. You got gone. No. This guy is absolutely amazing. Um, Michael Leonetti, it, it, it's incredible, your story. But what I love about your story is how you are now. Because you've got all that. I'm not going to say in the back of you, because you, as you said, he thinks about it every day. So if you think about it every day, it never goes in the back. It's always kind of, it's always kind of there. Yeah. But at the same time, you move on. But I had a hell of an engine pushing me, and that's the girl that I yeah, and that's your wife. With. She's lovely. She's beautiful. Um, how can anybody reach you? Obviously, they know you, but how can they reach you? Is your restaurant? My mother's house. Remember, my mother's house in Las Vegas. What, what street is it? Where that's 9320 Sun City Boulevard. I'm right in Sun City itself, right Sun across City. from the golf course. You'll sniff your way over. You'll smell garlic the minute you make a turn. Smell garlic you all over right Vegas. Up. <laughs> Michael, thank you for being my guest. My you pleasure. Absolutely amazing. Thank you very absolutely much. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you for watching Vegas Live with Nino. Don't forget to go to YouTube and to subscribe and sort of. We're actually getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We've changed a few things around and we've done a lot of. A lot of things are happening. Um, I just want to say happy birthday, AJ. She's on our team now. Uh, happy birthday. We'll be back. If you enjoyed the last show we just did and all the other shows, don't forget to subscribe Vegas Live with Nina on YouTube. We've got plenty more coming up and our guests are amazing. So don't forget to subscribe. We'll be right back. Vegas Live with Nina.